All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP laptop model 14-DF0023CL. So first what you want to do is take a PH1 screwdriver bit, okay? Um, well, actually, you want to remove these rubber pieces first, so I already removed them, but basically I just took my fingernail, got underneath, and then peeled them up. And then you'll see three screws underneath the back here. Keep these screws in order, you don't want to get them all mixed up. Same with every other computer, because you want to put the same screws back where you got them. Alright, sometimes they're shorter, longer, different size, and then you can damage things if you put the wrong screw in the wrong place. So I always try and put the same screws back where I got them from. Right, so three under the first cover here, one under this one, and then you got these two screws on the front right here, okay? So this I'm going to be trying to see if I can fix the, there's a trackpad button that's broken, like the clicking thing is loose and wobbly, so we're going to try and fix that, alright? Once you get all those screws open, open up the computer, or this is how I do it, but I use my fingernails here at this gap. You can use a pry tool or whatever, but this little seam here between the gray and black layers. So I use my fingernails, and then on the back I push with my thumb, and I just pull back with my fingernails while I push with my thumb, just like that. Okay, then you want to just go all the way around, go around the sides, same thing. Normally I would do this in my lap, so if stuff falls out it's easier to catch, but you want to be careful because this top piece might fall out. Okay. So just keep going all the way around, prying up the layer, okay, there we go, okay, I forgot if the hinges are attached to the bottom piece, actually, the top, okay, so I think this piece will come out, so once you get there, kind of just want to work your way all the way around, okay, there we go, and then what I'm doing is I'm pushing the cover this way while I'm kind of lifting it. And that helps undo those clips just like that kind of wobble it around and there we go so we got the bottom cover off the computer set that aside okay so I'm gonna be fixing the trackpad for that I'm gonna use a um, what do you call 3d printing pen but first thing you're gonna want to do is undo the battery okay so remove the battery here so there's one screw there another screw here Okay, they actually mark it with little arrows on the battery itself, though they don't mark it right because there are some arrows pointing at nothing. And then you got one other screw down here. Okay. Alright, so now that you got all four screws, it looks like there's no other screws. We want to lift this out. Okay, so just grab underneath the plastic part of this battery and pull it up. Alright, just like that. Battery model number is here, HT03XL, if anyone needs that. Okay, there you go. I'm going to have to clean all the dust out of this thing. It's pretty dusty, but we'll do that later. All right, set the battery aside. Okay, now the part of the trackpad that's broken, let's see. I don't know if you can see, but this plastic is all just loose and coming out. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go over the stuff that most people will go for, and that's the... RAM and the SSD. There are two slots for RAMs, um, but they are only using one. So the RAM just pops out like that. You pull those clips to the side. And this is PC4 2666V. So if you want, you can get another 4 gig stick or you can get two 8 gig sticks. And you can have, or some people will even put even more. Usually I feel having more than 8 gigs for like 99.999% of people is kind of pointless. So probably just get another 4 gig stick and then you got the SSD here which it looks like it would support a PCIe NVMe SSD but this is just a standard um, M.2 SATA SSD I'm not 100% sure if it will support the PCIe NVMe but it is slotted to where I think it, it will actually let you put one in okay sometimes you can put the SSD but it won't read properly to install the operating system and things so don't hold me to that anyways you got the keyboard connector here keyboard backlight connector these connectors you just flip these little latches up and then you can pull the cables out just like that okay um, one thing I forgot to mention if you're gonna mess around with the computer and you don't know what you're doing um, it's always good to um, 
press and hold the power button after removing the battery. So usually what I do after removing the battery is open the computer gently, okay, since you don't have all the screws, and then press and hold the power button. I'm holding it on this side. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, Google did some update, and it's stupid, and now whenever people call, it hangs up or it stops my recording. So anyways, press and hold the power button for about, yeah, 10 to 15 seconds. So I already did that. And then you want to slowly, gently close that again because there's two screws missing here. You don't want to just quickly open and close it and then it can yank something out. That's very important, especially for doing anything with the LCD or LVDS connector here. You got the DC jack connector here. You can just grab this and wiggle it out and pull it out. So if you're not sure, you can watch my other videos. I'm going to show for the speaker, but same idea. You just get on here. And you kind of just wiggle the connector out and it pops out like that okay i don't want to disconnect everything since my customer just wanted me to fix this but anyways um yeah keyboard cable keyboard backlight cable got the trackpad buttons and trackpad cable here and then you got this cable just for this board here which is a usb c port it looks like and a sd card slot okay and oh i guess this might also be the power button all right anyways we're going to be fixing the trackpad uh, right now if we can, or I'm going to attempt to. Okay, so take out those two screws and then I'm going to undo this cable here for the trackpad. So let's take the cable completely out on both sides. Okay, so it's labeled here TP for touchpad and then DB, I guess, for daughter board. So we're going to remove the touchpad cable from here. Oh, they glued it down. Okay, never mind. I guess. Wait, is it glued on both sides or just that one? I don't know. Well, they put some adhesive on it, so it's going to be tough. So I'm going to remove this side of the trackpad cable. Same thing. Flip that latch up and take that out. Okay, let's see if I can take this out. There we go. Yeah, it's held in with an adhesive, so I'm going to have to be careful with this because I don't want to bend this cable too much and then risk damaging it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this connected okay since I can't really peel it out and I'm just going to move it aside like this and hopefully it will hold itself here well I guess it won't hold itself so I'm just going to have to figure out how to do this okay so there's two little pieces here that are supposed to be attached but they're broken so I'm going to try and melt them in place with a 3d printing pen so I'm going to go grab that and I'll be back let me pause this video all right, so I got this 3D printing pen. It's heating up. I most likely won't need to add more plastic filament. Um, I most likely will just have to melt these two pieces so that they don't move around, but we're gonna see what we can do. So you kind of have to just line it up, make sure it's lined up perfectly, and then we're just gonna melt it back in place. I hope that's gonna be good enough to hold it. Um, I don't think adding this kind of plastic is going to hold very strong, so hopefully melting it will work. Because the way they had it, this was a solid plastic piece, and then these, um, this plastic piece has three little mounting points where they melted it in place. The only thing is you can't get these things to replace it, so basically what we're going to have to do is yeah, melt these pieces together. So a little bit of the 3D printing stuff is coming out. So maybe I will just add a little bit more because it's just, well, it's just eating it up. Oh, it's feeding some of the old, the plastic through itself. So I'm not even adding it. It's doing it by itself. And we will see what happens. There we go. So I'm going to add some, maybe just a tiny bit. Come on. Add a little bit in there. Oh geez, that's too much. Well, we'll see. If anything, I'll have to use like a razor blade and cut it off or something. Because now we got way too much of this. Okay, so we melted a bunch of plastic on there. Now I'm going to have to go on the other side. I don't know if my head's getting in the way, but I'm going to hold the other side down and basically do the same, melt it on. basically just melting the two pieces together that are broken 
and then we can add a little more. Maybe I can take it from here since I put this is way too much. Oops. Okay. Thing is very difficult to control like the precise flow that's the only complaint I have with this 3d printing pen stuff I don't know if there's one that's really good that doesn't have that problem but this is what I have so this is what I'm using all right so you get the idea melt the two plastic pieces together The white um, color is kind of helpful because then I can see where I added the plastic. Okay, it's basically a high temperature, um, much higher temperature, what do you call, hot glue gun? <laughs> okay, so I think we are good now. So let's see if I can pull out some of this excess Maybe it won't matter. Just melt it more flat. So it's not in the way. Okay. Cut off some of that. All right. Now let's see if I can put it back together. Okay. So we're going to put this board back in place. Just like that does fit over properly so it should be okay as long as I don't know if this clip will get in the way we'll find out and then I'll have to like cut it with a razor blade but for now it looks like it should be okay get everything lined up tighten the screws down okay probably should have showed from the top view earlier so you could see how wobbly it was before um, so here we go let's plug this back in I'm probably gonna clean the fans up off camera and then come back so that I can just reassemble and show you um, oh if you wanted to see the SSD how to remove it take the one screw out pops up at an angle like the RAM and you just wiggle and pull it out okay so these kinds of things I show in almost every single video that's why I don't really Sometimes I leave them out, but anyways, um, the CPU is soldered to the board, so you can't change it. There's the two speakers here. Um, they're easy to remove. You just got to take out the hinge for this. It's covering it, I believe. Um, then you got the fan here. Looks like just two screws. I'm not taking out all of this stuff because I don't want to mess with stuff when my customer just needed one small thing repaired. And yeah, wireless card here. I got lots of videos. Almost every laptop shows how to take out the wireless card. So if you want to see those kinds of things, uh, please watch my other videos. And that's pretty much it. Let me show you the trackpad or the touchpad mouse button now. It should hopefully be okay. So here you can see it clicks okay. Oops. It clicks okay. Hopefully it holds up and doesn't break again, but yep, for now it looks good. Alright, so yeah, I'm going to clean this off. I'll come back, I'll put it back together, and yep. Yeah. Alright, I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so I'm back, cleaned out the fan, it's nice and clean, cleaned the bottom cover as well. We're going to put the battery back in, okay. So just line it back up, hopefully the melted plastic doesn't get in the way. Alright, looks like it's good. Push, make sure you push down here to get the battery connector seated. All right, and now we just put back the screws. So one up here, All right? One in the middle here. It looks like this had a place where it can fit a hard drive, but oh yeah. So it actually does have a place to fit a two and a half inch SATA hard drive and there's the connector here but you do need to buy like the cable adapter. So I'm not sure where you would buy that, but it is uh, possible to upgrade that. Oh, and then another thing with the battery, there's another part number here. So if you want that, this is the HP part number. Let's see here, L11119-855. So yeah, 
All right, so let's put the cover back on. Hopefully it will close properly with that extra plastic there. Looks like it will. Okay, yep, it's not sticking up or anything. Looks good. So just push all of it back together. Very simple, okay. Make sure all the sides and everything are in place. That looks good, okay. And then we'll just put the screws back in. Three up here. Okay, one, two, three. All right, another screw down here. And then the two screws right here. Okay. All right. Now that we got all the screws, we just need to put those little rubber things back in. Just like that the rubber pieces have these little um, parts that stick out so you can put it back the right way make sure you put them in the little slots properly otherwise it will move all over the place okay just like that and then this middle one it kind of stretches some so you kind of want to go from the middle out but there we go just like that and there we go. So we got it all back together. Flip it over. To turn it on, you might need the charger. I don't have the charger with me. Sometimes when you take the battery out, it's not going to turn on until you plug it in. And I think that's right. Actually, I do have a charger, I believe. Let me see. I'll be back. Um, but anyways, the first time you turn it on, it will take a while because of the um, BIOS was reset from the removing the battery. But as you can see, the trackpad buttons are good now. Okay, I'll be back with the charger and then we'll see how it powers up. All right, so I'm back with the charger. Let me plug this in. Charge light is on. Okay, so let's power it up. All right, the screen just flickered, so it should be turning on. Again, it takes a while the first time you turn it on after removing the battery and draining the power, so be patient if it's not coming on just wait sometimes it takes a long time and if it doesn't come on after like a minute or so then you can then you can start panicking but it did flicker like twice so I think it should be going you can also check the light on the left here to see that the power light oops sorry that the power lights on oh here you go showing the CMOS is reset okay press enter to reboot the system should start up again Okay, just let it go. It takes a while. There you go. HP is on, spinning, and the thing should come up soon. There we go. So that's it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe because that will help others find these videos. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye.